Welcome to Salem Covenant Church online as we gather for our contemporary worship service. I'm Pastor Mark Patty. I want to encourage you to keep connecting with us here at Salem and with God through our various offerings here on our YouTube channel, at our website, salem-covenant.church, our Facebook page, as well as our Salem app. I think in these days where all of our routines are out of whack, it's more important than ever for us to make sure that connecting with God and connecting with one another in the ways that we can uh, is happening. So I encourage you to be doing this. Thank you for being with us today. I'm grateful for what's happened here at Salem over the past week. We had our annual meeting. Uh, officially, it was Tuesday night, although it took place over a couple of weeks since people were voting over time and looking at our budget recommendation for the coming year, uh, our ministry reports. It's all available online, still is. would encourage you, if you haven't seen it, to take a look even here on our YouTube channel for the ministry report that was done, which really outlines some great things that happened through Salem's ministry in the past year. I want to thank the many who participated in our outdoor worship gathering out in our parking lot this past Wednesday evening. What a fantastic time of worship that was, a beautiful evening, and so many people who helped to make it happen. We'll be doing two more of those worship gatherings in the coming month, uh, August 19th. We'll have another worship gathering on a Wednesday evening led by our traditional worship musicians. And then on September 2nd, we'll have another one led by our contemporary worship musicians. Encourage you to register and be a part of that. Also want to pass on a warm greeting and congratulations. Happy birthday to uh, Gwen Ivancy, a member of our congregation who turned 100 years old this past week. Oh, we're so delighted for her, with her. And we encourage you to go ahead and send cards uh, to her. Dan Bergstrom, our congregational care pastor, brought her 100 pieces of candy. And uh, we sent other things as well. Just a, a wonderful a marker in her life and in our community's life together. As we worship to today, I want to thank the many who are helping us, leading us uh, Norm Blagman and the Contemporary Worship Team, Pastor Luke Corthus, who is assisting, Amy Grubich and her sons, who will be leading us in a prayer and reading scripture for us, and then our sound technicians, video technicians, Pastor Luke Corthus, Todd Rood, and Ryan Worthman. Let us worship the Lord. <laughs> Thank you. 
Please join us in the prayer of invocation. To you be the glory, O Lord, our God. You are gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You are good to all and have compassion over all that you have made. We praise you. Forgive us for the ways in which we fall short of your glory and fail to follow the abounding generosity of your example. Sanctify us by the Holy Spirit as we look to you today, that we may grow to live according to the image of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Now we will be, our Old Testament for today is Isaiah 55, 1 through 5. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for which is not bread, and your wable for which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples, See, you should call nations that do not know you, and nations that do not shall run to you. Because of the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, for the one who has glorified you. Our New Testament reading is from Romans 9, verses 1 through 5. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever.
Well, as we continue in worship, I just want to take a moment to say thank you. Thank you for your continued support of the ministries here at Salem Covenant Church. We come now into the time in our service where we can continue in worship through the giving of our tithes and offerings. Uh, as Ma Mark, Pastor Mark mentioned in the welcome, I just want to say a thank you to the many who helped to make our outdoor worship service available um, for our contemporary worship service this past week. It was such a joy to be able to gather together. 
And I also want to encourage you, if you did not yet get a chance to watch the Salem Covenant Church annual report, um, to head over to our YouTube channel and watch it online there. There you will see many staff members giving updates and telling uh, stories of how God worked in and through Sa the Salem Covenant Church community this past year. And your financial giving helps to make that happen. So thank you so much for your support. As always, there are many ways to give here at Salem Covenant Church. You can go online to our website, www.salem-covenant.church, um, and give there. You can utilize Salem's mobile app and, and give online, or you can simply mail a check into the church and it will get processed there. Thank you, Salem Covenant Church. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are grateful that you love us so deeply. We pray for those who are struggling in our community, community today, those who are experiencing illness and loss. May your hand of comfort be upon them. We pray also for those who have not yet experienced your life-changing love. May you make yourself known through us, O oh Lord. We pray for our leaders and the difficult decisions uh, that are being made in these days. We pray for those who are marginalized in our community. May we be advocates for justice and peace. We pray for your peace and presence to come and fill our hearts. And today we come to you praying the prayer that your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So what do you do when you go through a difficult time or when you're grieving, when you've made plans to kind of catch your breath or get yourself together and it just doesn't work out the way you'd hoped? Yeah, I think of a, an old friend of mine whose uh, response to difficulty was to go home and have a quart of ice cream. It worked pretty well for her. Uh, last my, my go-to is to typically go home and have some chips and uh, some salsa. It uh, works for me oftentimes. But when the grieving is, is even more, uh, there's just this need that some of us have anyway to get away. Uh, last year, we had a dog who just had become very, very ill, and we ended up having to put her to sleep for good. And when I went home, it really sad. I just put on my running shoes and just started running. For me, just getting that physical release was important to get away. And in the process of running, I often end up talking to God. You know, in Jesus' uh, time, we see that he often would go away to, uh, by himself to a deserted place. It happens repeatedly in the Gospels. And in Matthew chapter 14, we have one of those examples. And this one, they aren't all like this one, but this one seems to come out of uh, a time of some grief for him or certainly uh, likely some struggle within for him. Just uh, the end of chapter 13, he's gone home to see, well, to his family, to his hometown. And their response there is to reject him. He gets a foretaste of what's ahead for him. And then right after that, as chapter 14 begins, John the Baptist is beheaded. And word comes to Jesus that his cousin, his colleague in ministry, has been killed, murdered. And again, there's this foreshadowing. This is what this path looks like for you, Jesus. And so we don't know what the mix of feelings were for Jesus as we begin today's gospel lesson, but very likely there's this grief over the loss of his, his cousin. 
this man he respected so much. There's likely grief over having been rejected by his hometown. And along with that, the struggle of becoming more and more aware of what this path that he's pursuing will entail for him. So I'll invite you to listen in as I read from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, beginning in verse 13, as Jesus goes off to get some alone time, some quiet time with God, and it just doesn't quite work out that way for him. Now, when Jesus heard this about John the Baptist being beheaded, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. And Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces Twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The word of the Lord. Jesus goes to a deserted place to be by himself. But when he gets out of the boat, he's not by himself, not by a long shot. 5,000 men plus women and children, your guess is as good as mine what that turns out to be. Is that 10,000? Is that 15, 20,000 people? And Jesus, emotionally exhausted, physically tired out, weary, like, well, many of us get and maybe even are at this time in this season of life where it just seems like there are so many challenges and decisions to be made and we can't quite get where we want to go. When we make our plans, we don't get to be there. I mean, Jesus, he wanted alone time. For some of us, what we want is some time with other people. We're not getting that either. And it's frustrating. I mean, how do you respond when you're, there's something you really need, you really want, maybe you've really planned on, and it just kind of uh, falls apart. It, it doesn't happen. A great friend of mine received this grant that I got six years ago for a sabbatical experience. He was going to begin during, I think it was the beginning of May, the end of April, right in that season when this whole COVID thing struck and all of his plans fell apart. Maybe some of your plans have fallen apart. Maybe some of the things that you've been counting on just can't happen. Certainly for Jesus, this is the case. And it's well worth noting what his response is. When his plans don't materialize, when crowds come and he just wants to be alone, he's moved with compassion. Now, this word in the Greek, it's only used about five or six times in the New Testament. It's this gut-wrenching compassion. It's this, this kind of feeling that doubles you over because it hurts so much. It drives you to action. It's used primarily with regard to Jesus and his feelings, his concern for the crowds. In chapter 9 of Matthew, when Jesus sees the crowds, it says he's moved with compassion. And so he sends his disciples out to carry on this mission to more towns and villages and people and here in chapter 14, he's moved with compassion and he takes steps to show care, to cure the sick. And actually in the Greek, it, it could be translated to strengthen the weak. You know, think about how weak he may be feeling right now. But so are others. 
who also know that John the Baptist has been killed, who also don't like what King Herod is doing, who also don't like what's happening in their world and in the Roman occupation. And they're weary, they're tired, and Jesus strengthens them, the crowds. And then, as he did in chapter 10 of Matthew, he sends his disciples out to be a part of the flow of his strengthening, healing presence in the world. How important for us, all we can do is practice. We're we're not going to ever be perfect in this life, but we can practice praying for God to give us the heart of God as we look out at the world. For us, oh God, help us to respond to the challenges of our world and the crying out of the crowds in our world, which we're hearing so much right now, to hear those cries and respond with compassion, with this gut-wrenching movement within us that something's got to happen here. We've got to help. We've got to do something to support, to strengthen, to heal those who are in need around us. The heart of God is revealed through Jesus and his responses to the crowd. And of course, our call as followers of Jesus is to become more and more like him. And becoming more and more like him starts from the inside out. Now, Jesus says elsewhere here in the Gospel of Matthew how it's out of the heart that the things flow, the, the evil flows, the evil words, and also the good words and the good actions flow out of the heart. And so for us to pray, God, change my heart. Help my heart to become aligned with Jesus' heart and my care for the crowds my care for the people of this world to be aligned with your care. The disciples come to Jesus. Their hearts evidently are being uh, shaped by Jesus. They, They seem to have compassion for the crowd too. They know that it's getting late and the crowds are going to be hungry. And so they they say what just makes sense. Jesus, you should send them away so that they get some food. They're going to need food, Lord. Send them out to the town so they can buy food for themselves. This isn't a bad thing to do. It's a good thing to do. They've got an idea of how they can help people. (laughs) But Jesus doesn't let it stop there. He says, you feed them. I mean, isn't that amazing? I just love that line. No, we've got everything we need right here. You feed them. As you see, the, the abundance of God is right here in our midst. As a church here, Salem, us, our community, we have everything we need to live into God's purpose, to live out God's purpose in this world. I mean, to our eyes, it never seems quite enough. Our response, like the disciples' response, is this response that comes out of an attitude of scarcity. You know, we we look and we think, oh, we never have enough. We always need more. Well, Jesus, all we have are five loaves and two fish. And Jesus, in so many words, says it's enough. (laughs) It's enough. Bring them to me. And so they bring what they have, little as it is, not nearly sufficient as it is. They bring what they have to Jesus. And the remarkable thing is that Jesus takes what they give him. Just like Jesus takes the offerings that we give him, meager as they are, I mean, no matter how much you may be contributing financially or doing in our community or in our world, you've got to know it's relatively meager next to the needs of this world, next to the glory of God. Thank you for offering it. And know this, Jesus receives that gladly. 
He, he takes what we offer, however small our offerings may be, however large in our sight they may be, he takes what we offer him and he blesses it. And then it says that he, he breaks it. Of course, that's what you do with bread. That's what we will do as we celebrate communion. We, we break the bread. Jesus breaks it. And somehow in the breaking, somehow as he gives it back to them, it becomes something more. Like the sacrament, that this juice and this bread becomes something far more in our offerings to God. Every time, every single time we offer to God the little that we have, he takes it and he blesses it and he breaks it and he gives it back to us so that we can then pass it on to others. We can pass on this blessing we've been talking about over the past several weeks in our sermon series. We can receive that blessing as he gives it to us and then we can pass it on. Because that, that's the reality of this blessing that God offers us. That ever since chapter 1 of the book of Genesis, it, where God blessed Adam and Eve, ever since, this blessing has been something that is not static, but has to be dynamic, has to be moving. It has to flow through them to the rest of creation. It has to flow through us to the rest of the community and the world around us. You know, we don't know where the miracle really happens in the midst of this story. I mean, where is it that the five loaves and the two fish become enough for 20,000 people? It's somewhere in the midst of that whole dynamic movement of disciples bringing what little they have to Jesus, him taking it and blessing it and breaking it and giving it back to them and then passing it on. Somewhere in the midst of all of that, miracles happen and people are fed and things happen in our world that go beyond what any of us with our little bits of the pieces of the puzzle could imagine. God does something that goes beyond what we could ask or imagine, what those disciples could have asked or imagined. God does something miraculous. And people are blessed. And we are blessed. The disciples are blessed in the midst of it all. And this is the call. This is the opportunity. This is the invitation for each one of us right now especially in these days where uh, we're maybe a little more disconnected from one another. We're not seeing each other as much as we want. Maybe we're frustrated by the things that we're experiencing about what's not happening, what we don't have, what we wish we had, what we wish we could offer. Uh, any number of those things. Here's the opportunity for us. It's for us to take what we've got. Take what God has given us and offer it to him. And to say, Jesus, would you, would you take this, this sermon, Lord, right now, this listening right now, this day right now, whatever it is that you've got right now, offer it to God and pray, Jesus, take this, bless it and break it as you will. Give it back and grant me the joy, the blessing of passing on your blessing to this world. What a gift God gives us. God doesn't just do the blessing on his own. The blessing for us is to be a part of the movement of God's blessing, God's love in our world. So I invite you to join me Join Christ's church around the world in being that blessing that we've been called together, created anew in Christ Jesus to be. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we do praise you for your compassion for us. How you are moved deeply because of your care for us. And we pray that you would instill within us that kind of compassion for our neighbors. 
He's like the good Samaritan who loved the Jewish man, had that kind of compassion for him. God, help us to have that gut-wrenching compassion that moves us to action for one another and for our neighbors and for all people. And Lord, today we offer to you the little we have, the little wisdom and understanding, the little bit of resources, the little bit of abilities, whatever it is we have, we offer it to you. We pray that you would take and bless and break and give us and through us your blessing to the world. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. As we come to the table of our Lord today, we come bringing... uh, the little that we have. As we talked about at our outdoor worship gathering on Wednesday evening, we, it may be just a little mustard seed of faith, of bread, of juice that we can bring to God. Or as we talked about in today's service, it may just be those five pieces of bread, those two little fish. It may not be much, but we bring what we have here and wherever you may be today we invite you to bring that before God to present it to God that he may take it and bless it and break it and give it to you that you would be blessed and grow to be serve to be the blessing that God has lovingly called you to be in this world friends this is the joyful feast of the people of God Many will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast he has prepared. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Let us pray together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. The scriptures tell us that if we confess our sins, God is utterly reliable and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. May God's peace be upon you and within you. Your sins are forgiven. Let us now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ as they are delivered to us by the Apostle Paul. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us pray. O Lord of all, we offer to you our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, presenting to you from your creation the bread and the cup that is before us. 
Gracious God, we pray that you will send your Holy Spirit on all of these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his death and resurrection, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly feast where with all your saints we will be gathered in glory everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus himself invites us to partake of them in faith, giving thanks to God. I'll invite you at this time to go ahead and take the bread that you have before you. And you can either eat the bread first and then drink the cup, or as I will do here, take the bread and dip it in the cup and then eat it as one. This is the body of Christ broken in love for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us eat. Let us drink. Let us live. I invite you to join me in celebrating the love of God in the words of Psalm 103, verses 1 and 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Let us pray together. Almighty God, gracious God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we praise you. And we thank you for how again and again you take very common things like bread and juice or wine and people like us. And you do your mysterious, mighty work of making these things, these people, holy and precious, and useful for your loving purposes in the world. We praise you for the gift of your love poured out for us, your body, Jesus, broken for us. And we pray that as we have received your grace today, we may go forward to live as your grace for the world. As you have revealed your love through this sacrament now, so reveal your love through us, through our words and our action, our lives, that we may be living sacrifices, holy and acceptable by your grace, worshiping you with every breath we take. For we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen.
bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace this day and forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.